stuffing it back in again. Basically, my knob couldn't expand anymore. Looking at people in the eyes, like gritting my teeth, holding my <laughs> This is the story of how I nearly permanently damaged my penis whilst traveling abroad in Southeast Asia. So it's a bit of a follow-up story, an add-on to my previous video of where I nearly died abroad because of my appendicitis. I'll put the link in the description for that. You should definitely go watch that. It was time for my catheter to be removed and I was very happy about that because it was a bit uncomfortable. So they go to take it out. But before they go to take it out, what they do is they get this needle, a uh, syringe, and they put it into the, they stab the rubber pipe that's going up into you. And they go, they, they take, they draw out the water and there's basically a balloon in your bladder that's holding it so that the pipe can't be pulled out. And that deflates as the water gets pulled out. That's what should happen. Now, for some reason, I'm not gonna judge or, you know, I'm not gonna point things at anyone, but for some reason, my catheter was filled with air instead of water. So when they were trying to pull out the water, they pulled out some, but there was, there was a bubble of air up in my bladder, which was keeping the balloon inflated. They just couldn't get it out. The way that the angle was, the way that the dynamic, you know, the liquid dynamics work in that scenario, it just wouldn't suck out. It could not get that out with the needle. So they kept thinking that they got enough out and they kept trying to pull it out. And so they'd hold on to, you know, my todger and then they'd just slowly try and pull it out. And this thing was not going anywhere. The pipe, the rubber pipe would just stretch and stretch and stretch and I would just be in absolute agony because I can feel this balloon trying to pull through my bladder. And the rubber pipe just stretching and pulling through my, u my urethra. And it was very uncomfortable. Um, and I would just be like, no, stop, stop, stop. And I can't speak any loud. So at that point, I couldn't speak any at all. I, I could say Bodai, Bodai, Jep, Jep Heng, Jep Heng, and that's about it. And uh, the doctor started looking really concerned. And that's when I started becoming a little bit concerned. I didn't realize there was an issue. I just thought, oh, it's, a, it's, it's taken a, a little while to come out. You know, there's sometimes with procedures, they don't go perfectly, but that's not an issue. He went over out of the room, hurried out of the room, didn't say anything to me, and went and got two other doctors. So when these three doctors came in, I was starting to think, oh, what's going on? Effectively, it ended up being 10 minutes of them trying to yank this thing out of my bladder, out of my penis. Um, and the way that they would try and flush this bubble out of the pipe, of the end of the pipe that's in my bladder, is they would get this really long needle push it in and they would pull my Johnson up so that you know the pipe that's coming out of it they can stab it and then line it up and then try and get it up feed it into my penis basically so there's a needle basically being guided up my urethra in a in a rubber tube and I I could basically I flinched a little bit and I moved and it kind of stabbed me from the inside. So imagine your, ure your urethra being stabbed from the inside with a needle. And as soon as they did that, I just said, no, 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 no. And then they basically just tried pumping loads and loads of water into it. They got like five to seven syringes worth, just pumping it into the pipe, basically. They're trying to push whatever blockage out of the pipe because they didn't realize it was necessarily air um, they didn't, yeah I didn't I don't know what they thought it was to be honest with you sorry about the noise I'm I'm just next to the Nam Can in, uh, in Laos northern Laos uh, and yeah and it's fishing time they're going out to go collect their nets uh, anyway they're, they're pumping this thing they're pumping this this balloon up and up and up and I can feel it inflating in me with all this water going in and with every time they push it and they go Shh, it first pumps up the pipe the rubber pipe that's in my urethra so it pushes expands my urethra first and then when it gets too much and you know the my basically my knob couldn't expand anymore it would then push 
up into my bladder and then be this really uncomfortable just swelling and then you know they'd leave it there and then by the you know it would take them a few minutes to do that you know with the seven syringes and then they'd suck it out one by one and that would that would hurt as well and I don't know why it hurt but it shrinking just hurt and hurt and hurt and they did that for about 10 minutes that pumping pumping water in and out of my urethra um, blowing this balloon up um, and it was about 10 minutes of just that and it was extremely painful at the end of it and there was five doctors in the end all around me all taking turns and all kind of arguing a little bit pulling on it really pulling on it and I'm like no stop 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 and they're like it's okay it's okay and they're just pulling 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 and it's not going anywhere and you know I'm just like please stop please I mean I'm in a lot of pain here. you know they're ri literally ripping my Johnson apart from the inside out it feels like my penis is just gonna go you know just then pull in the pipe and it should just pull and pull and pull and pull and, and oh my god the pain and not being able to speak any of the language was so frustrating I couldn't explain to them what was going on with me how much it hurt blah blah blah, blah. I didn't know what was going on with them why it was going wrong and they basically they looked really concerned they told me I said look I'm just gonna pull it out I'm just gonna pull it out and they they all looked at me like no 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 you can't do that the one the one doctor that could speak a little bit of English she was like no you cannot you cannot cannot do this you you permanent damage permanent damage you cannot you cannot um, um, and then he started saying you know you will not be able to use your penis he, he didn't know the word but he was look, he was pointing at it you won't be able to use this with your wife and blah -de -blah -de -blah. and I was like I was just getting really really scared at this point and the only way I can explain it is like reverse claustrophobia so you're stuck in a small space and you know you're trapped and you cut and you that panic well that was kind of how it was for me when it was a reverse something was stuck in my small space and I was panicking and yeah I didn't know what to do and I said how, what are you gonna do and they, they he said something about surgery. I don't know whether he said we can't have surgery or whether there was, but I don't know. That scared me. And then he just kept saying permanent damage, permanent damage, do not pull it out. And whilst he was saying that, all the other doctors were trying to pull it out. <laughs> and then they were pulling, and then they'd end up pulling out an inch, tiny, tiny bit, just an inch. And then it wouldn't come any further and it would almost feel like it was stuck. And then they would, what they would do is they'd grab my penis and then they'd start stuffing it back in again. Oh, it was bad. So the five doctors basically left the room and they were discussing it outside. Um, and they looked really worried and I was just in a panic and it was stupid. But I just basically went, I'm taking it out. And so I just grabbed my, my peanut, my knob, and I just grabbed the pipe and I just, I just laid back and thought of England and just pulled really slowly. And it, it, it was at this point, I could not care about the fact that everyone could see my knob. I was literally like this, completely naked on the bed, bearing in mind there's five other patients. And in, in Laos, the country that I'm in right now, uh, the whole family's come to look after you. It's a really nice thing. The whole family's come to look after you. They sleep by your bed, like multiple people, up to six, ten, doesn't matter. So there's about 25 minimum, but probably more like 30 people in the room all staring at me at this point you know I'm super worried and you know some of them are laughing at me but most of them at this point are looking really worried you know they've obviously heard what the doctors have said and it's scary I'm I almost feel a bit lucky that I don't know what they said now because I think they said like you know we're in trouble here but I've just basically laid back and I just went ah! like that literally like some crazy Phalang Piba, mental, mental Phalang. And I was just there and everyone was just like, just like staring like, and I was just like, yeah, just like, and it was coming out and I got it about, not what I know is hot, what I now know is halfway, but it felt like a lot. It felt like nearly like, like all of it had come out and I was like, and I was just like, you know, just looking at people in the eyes, like gritting my teeth, holding my knob, stretching this, 
rubber band, well, it looked like a rubber band. It was a rubber pipe, just pulling it out, and it just went. And yeah, and then my then then the doctors came in, and whilst I was doing this as well, there was one lady, the lady that kept kept staring at me and kept staring at my crotch the whole time when I was trying to cover myself up. She, when I was doing this, she was like, "Well done, well done, well done," and I was like, "It's too late. I'm doing it. I've got, I'm just doing it." And doctors came in and they were so worried that I'd now permanently damaged my penis. You know, they said, we can't fix this if you've damaged it. Um, go and try and have a wee. So I went and tried to have a wee, could not have a wee. It was like, it was like there was a blockage. I just could not pee and it hurt a lot. It just would not go through and I was very scared. But luckily, a couple hours later, I had the best piss of my life. No pain, free flowing piss. Um, yeah, maybe you didn't want to know all that, but a lot of people have been asking for some more stories. I'm going to upload, you know, I always upload a lot of good things, but I have had a lot of, a lot of crazy stories. You know, there are some horror stories when you go traveling and if I can share them with you guys and you get a laugh out of it or some entertainment, then something good has come from it. So, you know, that's why I'm doing it. I'm going to do a lot more of this kind of thing as well. I've got this one particular story of where this mechanic sabotaged my motorbike and I broke down in the middle of nowhere in 40 degree heat. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll come out with that as well in the next few few days or maybe next week actually, I'm quite busy. But yeah, thanks for watching, I appreciate it. Give the video a like and tell me what you thought about the story in the comments section.